so it's Saturday night. Let's have a little live chat. I'll be in the chat box below. And see, Wendy here. You guys want to drink with me? I'll show you what I'm having. Show me yours and I'll show you mine. Or wait, I'll show you mine if you show me yours. It's going to be a long video. Strap in. You don't like the way that I open my wine? Well, I challenge you to open a bottle of wine faster than that. <laughs> okay. Let me get situated. awaited. Again, I'm in the chat box below, so say hi. Be nice, please. Well, let me just tell you, if some of you aren't familiar with the way a premiere video works, so this has all been pre-recorded and edited, edited. <laughs> oh, I haven't even started drinking yet. Oh, this is going to be great. Um, and so as it's playing, it's not live, but I will be live in the chat box below. Does that make sense? Okay. Let's get started. I always feel like you guys are way too close. Is this too close? Okay. So I was on a pet sit and it was just me and this dog in this two story house on a property of about 10 acres, just surrounded by woods. And I had been there at the pet sit with me and the dog as German Shepherd for about two months before the stray, AKA Louie, who I kind of nicknamed Tom for Tomcat at the time. Cause I wasn't sure if he was neutered or not. He just kind of kept his distance. So he started showing up around like the first of August. And I had two more months to go at this pet sit. So at first, I only gave him water. Because it obviously it was really hot. It was during the summer months. And he was, you could tell, he was thirsty. So even though the dog had her own water bowls, I wanted to have his separate one. Just in case, you know, he was scared of the dog. So I would put on the back patio on these steps... A bowl of water for him. Well that lasted about two days um, before I started feeding him and I didn't want to feed him because this isn't my house. The owners aren't cat people. I didn't want them to come home to you know some stray cats hanging around. So I, I tried really hard. Well not really hard. I mean it lasted two, two days <laughs> before I I started feeding him and uh, I had some uh, cans of tuna and some kipper snacks um, some sardines and so I gave him that until I was able to go to the store and get him some canned food so yeah I started feeding him like once a day he'd show up every morning meowing at the door that's basically how it started out was him showing up at the door and Eventually, I started feeding him more than once a day, and he was getting a little more comfortable with me, and he let, you know, would let me pet him, and then he started, you know, rubbing up against my leg, you know. So it was a gradual process over the span of two months that he learned to trust me and let me give him loving and, and all of that. And at the time, I was thinking what am I going to do with this cat when I leave here? I can't just leave him here. 
I feared that if I left them there, they or the neighbors would call animal control on him. And I didn't want him, you know, to be shooed away from this place that he had gotten food and water from for two months. I mean, that's just not fair for him. And during this time, I also learned that he was neutered. Um, if you notice some of the pictures, he has a, a cut in his ear. And for those of you don't, that don't know, um, that's what they do when they uh, trap, neuter, and release cats in, back into the wild so they can't impregnate other stray female cats. So that if, you know, if an animal control officer sees the cat from a distance, they can tell that they've already been neutered because they have the cut on their ear. And obviously it doesn't hurt the cat because they're already sedated from being neutered. Um, so after that, I thought, okay, I've got to find this cat a home because I was planning on going back to Mexico. Um, I hadn't really thought that I, um, wanted another cat at this time. It's a long story, but, um, so I put out an ad uh, on Craigslist. I got no bites. Um, and so I asked some friends, hey, do you know of anyone that would like a, a, a barn cat or, you know, something? Because he's used to being outdoors. He's a survivor. Just, you know, feed him and water him and he'll be good. When the time came to leave, um, I took him with me because my friend found someone that had a farm and, you know, for rodent control, it would be a good option. And I thought, okay. So I took Louie with me when I left the pet sit. And when we got to the farm, it was a beautiful property. Um, they had horses and dogs and a lot of equipment, a lot of land. Um, it was near a, a busy highway and some railroad tracks. And I thought, oh God, what if he gets scared and runs away and he runs into the traffic or, you know, the dogs chase him off and he runs and makes a home in the railroad tracks. I don't know. I just, it, you know, by the time he was with me, um, he had done really well in the van. Um, I put him in the crate at first and he, he did really well. He didn't, you know, cry or, you know how cats are when they're in the car, they kind of do that, you know, that kind of thing. He didn't do any of that. He was just really great the entire time. So when I stopped and got gas on the way to the farm, I let him out of the container so I, he could, you know, hide under the bed in the van and, and feel a little bit more comfortable. And again, he did really well in the van and I was really shocked because I thought he would freak out because, you know, he, he's a stray. I don't, I don't know his past and I figured he, he's not fair. He was never feral though. I don't believe because he was just way too sweet and lovable and trusting. So anyway, um, where was I? Wine break. Oh, okay. So I was staying at my friend's house. And so when we were at the farm, I told the lady that was kind enough to take him in. I said, look, um, you know, he's been really, really good with the domestication. And I'm, I think he'll be a really good companion. And so will you give me a week with him so I could see how he does inside? And then I'll let you know. And she's like, yeah, yeah, no problem. Really nice lady. So we took him back to my friend's house and I was staying in her guest room. So Louie and I stayed in the guest room and I think it was maybe the first night he howled at night. You know, that whining, I want to go outside. I want to go outside. I'm not used to being trapped inside. And I kind of figured that would happen. So it was a sleepless night, 
But as the nights went on, that went away. So by the third night, he wasn't up at night looking out the window, begging to go outside. He was sleeping with me in the bed. And here's a picture to prove to you how much he liked it. So yeah, you know when a cat lays on their back and displays their belly that they trust you. And it just warmed my heart. And I figured, all right, we're going to give this a try. Let's, let's do this. Let's try this. Um, so as I was staying at my friend's house, I thought, okay, well, if you're going to be a nomad kitty cat with me, you're going to have to learn to be on a harness, harness and a leash. And so I'm going to get you leash trained. <sighs> so I took the time while, um, I was at my friend's house to take him out in the yard and get him accustomed to it. And uh, my friend has two dogs and three cats, so I definitely wanted to keep him separate from them for obviously a couple of reasons. One, he hasn't been to the vet yet. I don't know if he's, you know, has any diseases or feline leukemia or anything like that. And two, you know, I didn't want any undue stress on him, um, unnecessary stress on him or her animals. So, uh, we went to, uh, you know, her garage area, which is next, she lives out in the country next to a, a field and he was doing okay. Um, and he started to walk towards the van and then he got under the van and kept like going and going and going further. And I was trying to, you know, pull him back to get him out from under the van <clears throat> And I didn't have this harness tight enough. It was really loose, um, both around his girth and around his neck. So he was able to slip out of the neck first and then slip out of the girth, you know, the chest area. And then after that, ding, he was gone. And he ran into the weeds, which are like two feet tall. And I was trying to follow him very gently and just kind of coax him back towards the house, away from the road. And he wasn't having it. And I couldn't get close enough to him to grab him. And so I followed him into the woods across the street. Luckily, there was no traffic. So he went into the woods across the street from my friend's house. And it's very weeded and bushy and it's you know it wasn't like clear with trees it was just brush all around and I couldn't go get him and so he ran off and I thought well that's it I you know I tried and he's gone and I got really upset for the next 24 hours I cried I thought, I don't understand. Why is this not working? It was just, I just felt so guilty that like, this is my fault. He's probably going to get eaten by uh, coyotes. And I just, I was a mess. And, you know, I, I, I would continue to go out and, and call for him. Here, kitty, kitty, come here. And I didn't hear anything. I didn't see anything. And the next morning I got up and I said, okay, I'm going to try one more time because he might be out there. He slept out there through the night. And if he made it through the night, maybe he's, you know, he's still out there and he'll let me get him. So I walked around the street and I came back and I was, as I was walking back, coming about to go back to her house, I saw something moving in the bushes. And I saw a bird in the tree and I thought, oh, it was just the bird moving. And I thought, well, let me try again. So I grabbed, in my pocket, I had his treat bags. Um, they were like these, you know, the little greeny treats. And I shook the bag and I was like, here, here you go. At that time, I had already named him also, which made me even more attached to him. So his name was Louis Benjamin. So I called for him and I said, Louie, Louie, and I shook the treat bag and 
the weeds parted and he came out and he meowed. And I was like, oh my gosh, thank you. And my heart filled with joy. I mean, and so from that moment on, I said, this is my cat. And I grabbed him from the weeds and brought him back home. And he didn't fight me. He was like, oh, thank God you found me. I think he was scared throughout the night for sure. <sighs> so I got him home or, you know, my friend's house and fed him and he was fine. He was completely okay with, you know, not ever going outside. Um, because the following week I took him on that road trip where me and my friend went to Florida. So we drove from Texas uh, to Florida for vacation and I took Lou with me and he did so well on that trip and that really solidified the fact that I think he's going to be a really good road cat and it's proven so far to be true he's done really well um, we've been practicing out here in the desert on the leash and he's doing really well also I've tightened it <laughs> so he's not able to slip through <sighs> anyway so um, you know, for a long time, I always hated that, that saying, the cliche ass, everything happens for a reason. Well, I think that's true in this instance. Like the things that transpired happened for a reason. So, um, yeah. So that's the story of Louie. Um, you know, I, and it was a, it was a rough time because, you know, last year was such a clusterfuck of everything and it still continues to be, but it was, it was really hard for me. Um, and then Louie came into my life. So <sighs> who rescued who, right? <laughs> Okay, well, I didn't want this video to be this long, and already it is because, you know. But I tried to make it as concise as possible. But there's a lot more to it than that. But I didn't, again, I wanted to make this short, but that's the gist of it. Um, and he's a really, really good cat, and I, I'm really lucky to have found him or for him to have found me. Okay, well, let me know if you have any questions. Um, I don't know how old he is. I have not taken him to the vet. And I have wanted to, but I I don't want him to have to get rabies vaccinated. And that's a, a requirement in Texas. Um, I, I don't know how you guys feel, but me personally, I'm not a fan of vaccinations. There's a whole nother story to that, but for now... I'm going to wrap this up and I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'm really sad that I don't have more videos of when Louis was at that house sit and he, he was coming around as a stray because he was just skin and bones and his fur was dull and <sighs> now he's a healthy boy. So, okay, that's it. Um, I hope you enjoyed and happy Saturday. Cheers, everyone. <laughs>